Hey everyone, Mark Hall here from Knockbreda Parish Church and welcome to our third episode of Life in Lockdown and I'm joined by the Arneels. Hello Arneel family. Hi everyone. Hi. Uh, just before we get into the details of what life has been like in lockdown, why don't you give us a wee insight into who is the Arneel family? Well, I'll start. I'm Paul and uh, we live in the area and this is Ruth, my wife, and I'll let this man introduce himself. I'm Isaac. And Isaac's in what class? In P1. He's in P1, so he's enjoying homeschooling at the moment. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And tell us, uh, when you're not in lockdown, what are the three of you typically up to? Well, in my case, obviously down the gym seven days a week. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, when we're not locked down, um, I'm a hockey umpire, so that's an interest to have, umpire in um, Ulster and Irish hockey. Um, I'm a sports fanatic, following Liverpool this year in the relentless charge towards the title. Uh, yet to see what's going to happen there. Uh, I like to read as well, and as a family, we like to eat out, and we're quite interested in food and watching cookery programs and things like that, so that's something. Ruth, do you want to? Yeah, I am part of Belfast Community Gospel Choir, so I spend most of my time doing that. I'm really interested in photography as well, so I do a lot of that as well. Isaac? You tell me um, what you like to do. I like to play with trains and do stuff, and I, and I like to ride my bicycle with no stabilizers anymore. <laughs> with no stabilizers? All yes. of the highlights of lockdown. That's more advanced than your daddy. That's fantastic, Isaac. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, and tell us, uh, you're all involved at Knockbreda Church. So tell us a wee bit about your involvement at Knockbreda. How long have you been involved there? Um, tell us a bit about your experience at church. Um, well, around about September, October this year, we'd, we'd been coming to Knockbreda for five years. Um, we had uh, two, two members of the church, Tom and Pearl Davies, who were actually our neighbours when we moved into this house. Uh, lovely people. And um, at that time, when Isaac was born, uh, the church was setting up um, Shake, Rattle and Ryan, Ryan which I, oh, the name of which I always get wrong. <laughs> and Pearl had invited Ruth along um, to come with Isaac. And she took, him, she took him along for quite a while. And maybe I think within that year or sometime, around like November, um, we started to come as a family, and we've been there ever since. Um, we love coming to Knockbreda. Um, from the first time we came to the church, um, we just really felt um, that people were actually really interested in us as a family, and were so welcoming um, and so interested. And we love the inter sort of generational um, style of the church. You know, people of all ages and. Just people really taking an interest in how you are and what you're doing, and particularly with Isaac as well, for somewhere for him to go and how caring and concerned and so many members of the congregation always were and asking about him and I've really nurtured him through and, and this year he's been in Sunday school and um, Judith uh, and Anna and that's been great for him. So you know we we really do love um, coming to Knockbreda. We feel so at home there, and Ruth's um, involved in the singing there, and it's it's really really great. So we think that's one of the real um, unique, not unique things about Knockbreda, but one of the things we love most about it is just how much people are are interested in you. That's great, and you can confirm that we're not paying directly into your bank account for those uh, statements. Uh, wouldn't want to lie. Uh, <laughs> In case of <laughs> legal action, so, <laughs> no, no comment. No, I actually okay, remember. That's great, Bill. That was very good of you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first ever wig at Knockbreda, and I got up to speak from the front. And Isaac, you interviewed me. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> you were like Parkinson. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So tell us, um, obviously the last few weeks, month, month and a half, soon moving into two months, have been a bit unusual for all of us. Uh, so tell us a wee bit about what have you found helpful or useful 
uh, to try and get yourselves through lockdown? Um, well, we've been continuing to do Shake, Rattle and Rhyme, which has been so brilliant um, to be able to con continue that for the parents and um, for kids because it was such a big help to me when I had Isaac um, just to have other people to talk to and see friendly faces and have just an hour in the morning to just see people and talk and um, to be able to do that online has been just brilliant and I've had so much feedback from mums just so thrilled that we've been able to do that. Um, this week we're actually going to do one where um, the kids sending in requests for songs as well. So just trying to make it a wee bit more personal and, and that's been really helpful. For Isaac to be involved in it as well has been great, you know, for him to be able to sing with me and everything. And um, that's been really lovely just to have that connection with everybody through an online forum. It's been really good. I find that really helpful. And then we had uh, Marie Grateful with Johnny during Easter because of Bible Voyagers and Isaac was able to take part in that and we watched him every day and um, he even the sort of poor replacement for Joe Wicks that was on that. <laughs> uh, enjoyed doing the crafts and things um, that week. We've been doing the, our home group that we host um, on Zoom which has been really good because you know although we have each other you know you're not connecting with people the way you normally would and it's been great to catch up with everyone. Um, the guy leading it, his theology is a wee bit tight. Um, well, we keep him right, you know. Um, just, I think maybe should clarify that that is you. I don't know that. <laughs> and your theology largely is okay. Um, um, we've also enjoyed, uh, you know, having the church on Sunday with Bill and Rebecca and yourself at night. So, and for Tasha organising and so on. So, so that's been great. Um, just in terms of sort of, you know, our own reading and so on. Um, in last year, in 2019, um, I set about trying to you know, read the Bible uh, in a year. And by sort of March this year, uh, not quite in 12 months, but 14 months later, I got, got the revelation. So although it wasn't within a year, um, I thought maybe better to do it within 14 months than maybe not at all. But um, I actually, with everything that was going on, sort of just took a pause um, about, you know, rather than trying to get my head into Revelation at that point, um, and just started to go back into the Psalms uh, and, and read those, you know, where you would get sort of maybe some comfort and assurance at, at, at a difficult time. Um, when I read the Psalms, last, it was actually last summer, I'd actually sort of put a little dot, a star on, on, on ones at the time, you know, that I just enjoyed and, and you know, that I got something out of. So I, I read through those for a couple of weeks. Um, just one or two, maybe, if, if, if you like, that, you know, that I find helpful. Um, the second one I read was actually Psalm 5. And verse 11 of it says, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. And that's something that jumped out at me because obviously for so many weeks we've been talking about the spread of a virus and the danger and the anxiety that that causes uh, everybody, I think. And it was just quite reassuring to read, you know, a verse that was talking about the, the protection of God being spread over people. Uh, and that was something that, that we find, you know, really comforting. Um, another psalm was Psalm 91. Um, and it's it's a really good read at this time. And in verse two, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And I think particularly at, at this time, you know, that the, the situation looks so desperate, you know, and people will maybe go on into the Bible. Um, and the thing about trusting God, you know, if, if I'm honest, is I think it's an easy thing to say um, when things are good. Um, when things are well and you go to it's church and you know we're trusting and we're saying and it's 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 you know no problem but i think when you are faced with like a really challenging situation which this is you know uh, you know mentally and, and so on and um, it's a lot harder um and something that and, and it's a challenge and something that i read last week um when bill had asked us to read through deuteronomy um for his talks and it just really struck a chord with me because it was really helpful. I think if you, if you find that your faith is wavering at this time, I find it really helpful. And it's chapter 2, verse 7. And it says, The Lord has blessed you in all the work of your hands. 
He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you've not lacked anything. And I think if you ever need a reminder, you know, to look back at, on a verse like that and think of your own life and think of the ways that God has looked after you and the, the things that you have, you know, in your family and, and the blessings that you have, you can sort of take great comfort in that. And it helps you, you know, when you read those Psalms to really trust uh, and, and, and really believe um, what they say. Great. Yeah. Uh, Great. I've, and then maybe that's enough. Or you want me to, uh, uh, so one other wee thing. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Uh -huh. That, you know, after that, I started to read Luke. And I think what's good about the moment is there's quite a bit of time uh, mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. And you sort of get into it and read the commentary. And, you know, not sort of when you're sort of living life at 100 miles an hour, you just don't have time, a lot of the time to digest things. So it's been nice to read that, you know, and take your time and really sort of get into it and, and read with commentaries and try to understand you know, things that you maybe in the front big pace of life skip over and trying to get on with it. And also, I think it's a good opportunity lockdown, you know, because you've got so much time to do things like that. That's great. Okay. Well, if we were to take everything that you've all said and to wrap it all up uh, in one sentence or one piece of advice for everybody listening as to what would help them in lockdown, what would that one thing be? Well, as you know me, Mark, I never want to just say one thing. <laughs> but we did talk about this and we've both felt that at the moment, you just don't have the constraints of time that you normally have. Uh, and I think, you know, when you're, you're going through your working and even weekends, you're always rushing around. What's happening next? What time is it? And, you know, we've got 10 minutes before we have to go there. And it has been a great, although there's been a lot of anxiety, there has been a lifting of a lot of pressure because you're not getting up in the morning, you're not rushing out, you're not running around 100 miles an hour. And I think that's one of the benefits, maybe, and one of the things now that you think about in lockdown is that with the, with, with the sort of shackles of the constraints of time are off, um, we can sort of slow down uh, and relax a bit more. Um, I think another thing, maybe, as, a, as parents, that we both feel is that, you know, you've got such quality time, um, you know, with, 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 with the child and our children, and if you have children, and I know this is a tough time, you know, people who are on their own and so on, but from, from our point of view, um, now don't get me wrong, this is not like sort of utopia here where sort of Isaac's, you know, fainting in one corner, we the down in another, I'm reciting poems in another corner, you know, <laughs> we'll have a family sing song, but, um, you know, it's like, if you think about it, when would you ever get six, eight, ten weeks together as a family just to, you know, and, and like, I mean, we're not on the front line. We're not, you know, in doing those incredibly tough and challenging jobs that people are doing in hospitals and supermarkets and so on. So really, you know, we've got time to go for walks, to play games together, watch things together, ride bicycles. And I think really for families, you know, I think you have to look at the positives that really, when would you ever get a time like this? And maybe to embrace it with a great weather and we're really just being asked to stay at home and spend time together and, and really that's not the worst. So we've really quite enjoyed that. And I think actually the challenge probably that we feel is maybe that, you know, to continue that, you know, rather than maybe just sort of getting back to normal and right, everything's back to normal and we're running about frantically to sort of take a bit more time and, and just do a lot of those things that we've enjoyed doing during the lockdown, you know, so and the sun's and Maybe just perfect time because the sun's now in Isaac's eyes. <laughs> That's great. Well, look, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, okay. I think we'll, we'll be glad to, to hear and see from others in the church. And please do feel free to check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel where you'll see things like the Shake Rattlin' Rhyme and you'll see Bible Voyagers and the services that we've been doing as well. Uh, but thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>